What's up, everybody? Good to have you with us on this uh, warm Tuesday evening. Man, I'm telling you, it's a. Uh, man, I'm telling you, it's so hot outside right now. I cut my sleeves off today, but then I put this on for the show. So, but hey, it's good to have you. Good to be back in in uh, in the house, man. It's it's uh, we didn't get a chance to to get on last week. Um, but man, I, we got some awesome stuff to be talking about and we're going to be getting into the word of God tonight, but I hope you're doing good. Let me sign on real quick so I can see who's with us. I like to kind of talk back and forth to everybody. Hope you guys are staying warm. I know, uh, I was watching some of the news and, uh, I guess they're cycling power, which is kind of strange. You know, kind of like you don't have enough reserve power. You know, it's a, it's a lot of days. You can't make it through four days. And uh, <laughs> somebody, needs to, somebody needs to get the energy company kind of just say, hey, 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 you guys need to, you guys need to maybe get you some more, uh, some res- reserve tanks, whatever, however you do your energy stuff. But hey, it's good to see everybody tonight. Want to say what's up to Ashley, Victor, Victor. That's right. This is the best show in all the land. That is right, Michelle Carlton. Good to have you with us. Uh, Jamie Applegate wants to know what spirit we're attacking tonight. Um, <laughs> well, well, we'll be going after something. Um, the fallen star, which, uh, what is that, Satan, Lucifer? No, not the Kansas City star, but the fallen star. And um, good to have all of you. Dana, good to have you with us. Andy, Christy. Hey, don't forget to, uh, you know, you can share this with, you know, anybody on your Facebook page. You can just kind of hit the share button. You know, just kind of, you know, I don't even know. You go here and you just hit share and, you know, if you don't know how to do it. We have some people who, who say they don't know how to do it, but it's really simple and easy to do. So do that. That'll be awesome because you'll get to get a chance to get people on your Facebook page, uh, you know, getting into the word. And, and you know, the, the word of God is is sharper than any two-edged sword. And I'm just going to tell you right now, all you, all, you know, there's a lot of people that, that, that are, you know, think they can shut down what we're doing here. Let me tell you, you can't shut down the Holy Ghost. But guess what? The Holy Ghost will shut you down. And you might be, oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah check, go, go, go read Acts 5 and, and, and read about Ananias and Sapphira. They walked in a place and they were drug out. Uh, they weren't kicking and screaming because they were dead. But see, they lied to the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of people that think they can just play games with the Holy Ghost and they can come against what the Holy Ghost is doing, but it's a dangerous thing. And, you know, I didn't get a chance last week to uh, get on here after the uh, national, our local National Enquirer, which is, I think they're, they're called the Kansas City Star, which that's really what it's become. Uh, I haven't read the article. Uh, a few people told me about the article, and I was like, so you can just, I guess, write things that are completely false and write things that are just, 
you know, in outer space and, and paint people every way you want. That's great. I mean, it's National Enquirer, I guess. But I don't read the paper. I don't read the news because it's, it's, it's narrative is, is controlled by the God of this world. So I challenge you that no matter what in the days ahead, don't, don't put any faith in the news. I mean, put your faith in the good news in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? So let's get into it tonight because we're, we're going to get after it. I mean, this is, you know, I don't, I don't have time to, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't play games. I, you know, th- those days, I mean, in, in anybody playing games right now, they're just not going to make it. I mean, we, we're, we're going after the stuff that God has put in our spirit. You know, this past Sunday— I told him on Sunday that we had, at our church, uh, we have, I think we have the highest uh, retention rate. Um, you know, you would think this past Sunday, with as, as cold as it was and the snow, it would affect attendance. Nope. Not really. Because people, you know, I think people literally would uh, go get them some, some, I don't know, Candace, if it's an old white fang, kind of wolves in a sled, <laughs> they'd get themselves here. Uh, but you know, me and Justin were talking about, you know, people in Kansas, they panic about any type of thing with weather, but you know, in other States, we have weather like this all the time, maybe not this cold. I think the last time it was colder than this was, I think 1989. Um, but you know, we had an awesome time on Sunday. I mean, I'm telling you, people got delivered, man. I, 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 I felt that it was one of the strongest words that have, has, has gone forth and, Man, I just I just love being in the house with hungry people. So if you're if you're looking for a church, if you're looking for a well, let me just rephrase that. If you're looking for a Holy Ghost church, right? Uh, we we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We believe in laying hands on the sick and and uh, and, and watch them recover. And we 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 believe that we have authority over the enemy. Um, we're a Holy Ghost church, right? We're we're. You know, we don't watch stuff on screens here. Um, uh, you know, it's hard for the pastor to lay hands on you. Uh, well, if, you, if, he's, if he's on a screen, but some people say, well, we have our own pastor, and there's one on the screen. But, yeah, usually at those, they're, they're not laying hands on you. If they are, that's great. But, you know, I, I, think, I think every church needs a physical pastor with, a, with, a, with, a, with an on-time word. I think God speaks to pastors, and if pastors are listening, um, that God will give them a word in season every single Sunday. Um, the, every single week at our church, there is manifestation and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, meaning that you can't preach the word. I mean, think about how many times the word's preached all over the country on Sundays, and there's no demonstration or manifestation. That, that is crazy. Every time Jesus preached the word, there was all, always demonstration after the word. Um, don't forget, we also have Sunday nights. Uh, at the last Sunday of every month, so our next one is I think February 28th. It's at 6:30 p.m. We also have a Wordathon revival. We got three of them this year, March 8th through the 12th um, at 7 p.m. So mark that down. But let's get into it tonight because we're going to have a good time. We're going to to the Book of Jude tonight, um, and the Book of Jude is really one that you know I think a lot of people. Haven't read, but it's 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 the book right before Revelation, and we are just right now in Revelations seventeen. This past week was week number twenty four, and we're going to finish, I believe, Revelation seventeen this Sunday, and uh, keep moving forward. I can't wait. I'm not even. I'm not even letting it out of the bag. But what we're doing when we finish Revelation, um, it's going to be, man, you, it's going to be awesome. It's, it's going to be awesome. Awesome blossom. So check this out. Jude chapter 1. Let's just start at verse 1. This letter is from Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. I'm writing to all of you who have been called by God the Father who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Jesus Christ. So we know that Jude's writing to believers. So he's not writing to unbelievers. That's very important to understand. And he says, May God give you more and more mercy, peace, and love. Now, verse 3, he says, Dear friends, I have been eagerly planning 
to write to you about the salvation we all share. But now I find that I must write about something else. Urging you, he's talking to believers. I don't think there's a more relevant word for right now than this right here. Urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. Notice here about defending the faith. Are you willing to defend the faith? Because people will do it um, when they're around a bunch of people that agree with them, but will you do it when you're around a bunch of people who don't agree with you? Meaning, I don't care what anybody in this city, anybody on Facebook, any bozo the clown that tries to say, well, what you're saying, man, is, is, is just, it's stupid. It's, it's, it's the Word of God. It's not stupid. It, 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 it is absolute truth. The devil in you hates the Word. But I'm going to keep preaching the Word, no matter how much you label me as hateful, uh, because you can label me, you can label me as a circus clown. I've never been a circus clown, but you can do it. But it don't mean anything. You can tell other people that, oh, yeah, Pastor John, he's a circus clown. He, was, he, he rode elephants and ate peanuts. I never did, but they'd be like, yeah, yeah, I think he did too. And then they'll start being like, yeah, you know, let's call some papers and let's get this. Yeah, yeah, he used to wear, yeah, I think he used to kill elephants. He used to go on these safaris, and before you know it, it's like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the, I'm, I'm, I'm pa- my name and my, my face be on the paper, and it'd be like the African animal killer. <laughs> so, you know, I don't care. You, you can label me whatever you want. And, and you know what? I'm not going to even, you know, I'm not even going to try to stop you because I'm going to just keep preaching the Word. You're not going to get me off my post. You're not going to get me off my post preaching the Word of God. And you might disagree with it, and you might hate it, you might dislike it, but I'm going to keep preaching it because it is the only thing that brings salvation to people. So your 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 uh, you know, if you would call them threats, they'd be pretty weak. If that's what you would call them, I'm 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 going to keep going. You can't you know like this past week there were people that literally like we're gonna you know we're gonna hey we're gonna uh, get the church shut down. <laughs> like is that really where you're at? Like is that really where you're at? Like, if you don't know anything about this church, you've never been to this church. And the people that say they've been to this church have never been to this church. They're a bunch of devils lying. And the thing is, you can't shut down this church. You can try, but you're never, you never do it. You'll never do it because you can't shut down the Holy Ghost. And what God has started, no man's going to be able to stop. God's put this in motion. I mean, do you think that you behind a keyboard or you working some in, you know, dead-end job and, and like, you know, you have no authority. You, you, you don't have the power of Christ living on the inside of you. We got the power of Christ living on the inside of us. We, we, don't, we, we, don't, we don't have to be intimidated by anybody. You shouldn't be intimidated by anybody. And you just keep preaching the word. And you keep speaking it forth. Because I know there are so many people in this city, like, that are dying, that are starving, that are hurting. And, you know, every week we're, we're seeing marriages come back together. We're seeing people who have been addicted to meth and heroin and crack. We, you know, we're, we're smuggling Bibles all across the world. We're, we're, we're supporting missionaries. We're, you know, all the stuff that we're doing. And we don't got time to sit around with someone who's in aisle nine of high V, you know what I mean? And they're, they're upset. I mean, you know, you, hey, you, you, you can't stop it. You see what I mean? And you're not and, and here's the thing that's ridiculous is like everybody that's out there, it's a spirit of religion. It's the, as we talked about it on Sunday, it's the false church. It's the whore of Babylon. A lot of whores out there. A lot of whores in the land that are riding the beast. Well, not literally yet, but I mean the 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 whore of Babylon is the false church. And interesting how a lot everybody loves the false church in the world. They get drunk it says, off the whore's immorality. And the, the whore gets drunk off the blood of the saints, meaning she loves to attack true believers. And there's a, do you know how many, you know, I mean, literally millions of people that think they're believers. And they, they, they wouldn't know Jesus. They wouldn't know him. They wouldn't know him if he came by on a Segway, wouldn't know them. 
wouldn't even know who they they have a form of godliness they deny the power thereof and they're destined to hell unless they change their ways but they think they're saved i go to church and i you know we're really i've had people that have actually come against me and i've literally said i, I the lord told him like no nope, wasn't the lord it was the devil and uh you don't know the voice of jesus you know the voice of satan and the Bible says, my sheep, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So you can listen to the voice, but, you know, you know, those that are uh, controlled by the devil, they know his voice, right? So let's get into it because we got to defend the faith. That means that we have to stay on guard. We have to stay our post. We cannot ever, 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 ever back down and say, well, you know what? That's off limits because that just gets us in too much trouble. No, no, no. That's not what we're going to do. Because God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people, hey, us, defending the faith. I say this, now this is because he's going in, he's saying, I'm saying this. Because some ungodly people man, have warmed their way into your churches. I like that terminology. They warmed, warmed their way. Just worms. Now think of this. He wrote this, and think if he was if 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 Jude was writing this today. I'm telling you, they'd hate him. You mean they're you calling some people that are coming into your church worms? That's not very loving. And then the other churches in town would put like "love is kind" around town. They'd do that. Coming against actually. The person who's actually speaking the word. I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches, saying what? Ooh, this is going to sting. Saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. How many churches? Because tonight, really, the message is, it's a call. It's a call to remain faithful. And this message isn't for everybody. There's going to be a lot of people that get on here and tune in this and they tune off because you know what? They can't handle it because they're not willing to take a stand. They want to sit on the bleachers. They're lukewarm. They can't take the word. Not at this degree. No. Because it is a strong word, and it's hard for a lot of people to digest because in order to digest this word, you got to completely systematically change everything in your life to line up with God's word and says, if God's word says to do it, I'm going to do it. If God's word says don't do it, I'm not going to do it. If God's word says speak against it, I'll speak against it. If God's word says speak for it, I'll speak for it. That would mess up a lot of people's lives, but it'd mess it up in a good way if they allow it to do that. Um... But, you know, let me say it again. I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches, saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. So the justification of abortion and homosexuality and lying and perversion, there's a lot of churches justify and say it's okay. They say it's okay, and they would probably say that God's marvelous grace allows them to do that. There's churches here in town that do that. It says the condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Ooh. So you're telling me that if someone has a church, and it's a big church, and let's say they have all a bunch of nice stuff. If they're preaching that homosexuality is okay, or what, what did the word just say? They're condemned. I don't care how nice they preach. I don't care, you know, how, how nice they look. Because the false church isn't threatening. They're loved by the world. Oh, yeah. They're loved by the world. You should, if you haven't ever downloaded the Nexus app, you should do so. Listen to this past week's sermon. 
Revelation 17 that we just, we, I mean, I'm telling you, we'll t- we talked a lot about the golden goblet that the, the prostitute carries. She's adorned. She's, she has beauty and, and gems and jewelry, and, and, and the, world, she, the world loves her. But God is saying, hey, there is a record in Scripture that shows you that God never changes, that what he said 5,000 years ago is just as true today, that if it was wrong 200 years ago, it's wrong, it's wrong today. You know, we were during, the, during uh, Sunday night for my birthday, commercial came on and were these two gay guys my kids were sitting there I'm like I don't want to watch that crap that's disgusting when 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 did when did uh it stop being disgusting because you know most people used to view it as it was pretty disgusting it's pretty I mean another dude I mean it's that's it's, it's grotesque it's perverted in fact Romans 1 tells us that they were given over to a reprobate mind, and after that, they got into homosexuality. So it's almost like homosexuality is the punishment for rejecting God. Think about that for a little bit. But it was the disgusting commercial. My wife went to the store to get me a card. They had husband for husband, man to man. Like, what's happened to this world? Woman to woman. That's disgusting. That's perversion. And if you think that's, that's hateful, you're a pervert, man. You're, I mean, seriously, you're so far gone. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You're the same people that 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 condone. Basically, you just you you condone anything, anything anybody wants to do if 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 it makes them happy. But but of course, you say you'll stop if it you know if killing your neighbor makes you happy. Then don't do it. Well, one day you'll 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 change. I know that sounds crazy, but 20 years ago, we wouldn't believe where we are right now. It's disgusting. It's grotesque. It's ungodly. It's an abomination. But so is lying, and so is anger, and so is unforgiveness, and so is bitterness. And yes, there are, you know, sin is sin, but there, I mean, there, there are levels of bondage and consequences. And Jesus is telling us this. He says in verse 5, because, you know, here's the thing. If you're watching this or if you know anybody that's watching this, oh, pretty old Jesus, he's fine with me. No, he's not. He says, I want to remind you, though you already know these things. Now, notice it says not God. It says Jesus. Now, they're the same, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but it says Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt, but Later, he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. Who destroyed them? It says Jesus did. And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them, but left the place where they belonged. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, waiting for uh, waiting, waiting for the great day of judgment. And don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, which were filled with immorality and every kind of sexual perversion. Transgenderness, homosexuality, that's sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and as a severe warning of the eternal fire of God's judgment. That's pretty strong. Now, here's the thing. Did I have people picket the church and get upset? I'm sure, yeah. Am I saying anything hateful? No. Am I speaking in a hateful way? No. I'm speaking in a passionate way, in a way where I care for people, and I'm tired of watching people take this word and stomp on it and just preach everything but the word, but say it is the word so that the world accepts you. If you want the world to accept you, you got to reject the word first. You can't accept the word and be accepted by the world. Jesus said that. He says they love you because you're a part of the world. The reason they don't love you is because you're not a part of the world. Hmm. 
you know, my kids, man. It's like, uh, no one, no one cares that it bothers us. We're, we're the ones that are, that are supposed to lay down and be like, yeah, just put whatever commercials you want. Put all this perversion in front of our kids. You got to remember, this is the, the people that are pushing this are the same people that legally allow pornography all over the internet in the United States of America. Yet we're worried about masks. We're worried about masks, and you morons out there are worried about masks, yet there's, there's 9, 10, 11, 12-year-olds getting addicted to pornography every single day in our city. And you haven't even thought about that, but the masks, that's, 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 that's killing it. That's doing it. That's so disrespectful. Something a devil would say. Choke on the gnats and swallow the camels. That's what demonic people like to do. In the same way, these people who claim authority from their dreams, live immoral lives, defy authority, and scoff at supernatural beings. But even Michael, one of the mightiest of the angels, did not dare accuse the devil of blasphemy, but simply said, The Lord rebuke you. This took place when Michael was arguing with the devil about Moses' body. Now, we could get into that tonight, but that's a that'd be another Tuesday, because that, that, that'd be awesome to get into. Verse 10, but these people, these false teachers, these false Christians, these fake ID Christians, these people scoff at things they don't understand. Like unthinking animals, they do whatever their instincts tell them, and so they bring about their own destruction. You know, this world is bringing about its own destruction. And... You know, that's the problem. That, that you know, this world's going to, you don't have to get in the way. They're, they're destroying themselves, and they're going to continue to do it. And um, the false church, which let's go back to it, 50% of the church is false. You take the 10 bridesmaids, five are ready, five were not. Um, Kenny, Pastor Kenny, our youth pastor, came to me and said, hey, I know you haven't read the article, but there was one part in it that said 48% of pastors disagree with you, Pastor John. I was like, well, we got 2% more to go. So that shows you that there's a separation between churches that are Holy Ghost-led. And, and, and don't let people, I mean, there, but there, there, there are people, and we talked about this on Sunday, they can say, oh, we preach Christ, but they reject his word. And that's the deception. That's the deception. They say they, they, they preach Christ, but they reject his word. They won't speak up. There's no boldness. You know what I mean? And, you know, the Bible tells us that this world, they're unthinking animals. They do whatever their instincts tell them. So they're literally like foaming at the mouth. And they cannot wait to attack. They get drunk on the blood of Christians. They love to attack Christians. And a, the majority, a lot of people that are attacking Christians are people who think they're Christians. And I think that's what can, and we've talked about that many times at our church. So people shouldn't live in confusion about that because they're fake ID, right? They're wolves. What sorrow awaits them? The Bible says, For they follow in the footsteps of Cain, who killed his brother. Like Balaam, they deceive people for money. And like Korah, they, they, they perish in their rebellion. Now, I think the words have already been pretty strong in Jude chapter 1. There's only one chapter, but in Jude. But he hadn't even got into it yet. He's about to give it to him. How many of you watching this have actually read the Word? 
I'm sure many of you have, but remind yourself the next time some Yahoo comes along and tries to say something about Jesus. Do what I always do. Quote me five scriptures. 99% of people won't be able to do it. Yet they're, they're going to try to tell you about Jesus. Can't, you can't, can't, can't give me five scriptures, and then you're going to tell me about Jesus. No, uh-uh. It's like someone saying they're going to go teach math, but they don't know what two plus two is. No, sit down. You can't teach math. You got to know more than that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, you're going to have people that 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 that'll say stuff to you. And but Judah's giving it to him. And how, I, I, we got to get to the place where we're not offended, we're not bothered, and we're not caught off guard when people look at us and say that's not nice, that's not very loving, because your definition of love is actually hate. That's what it is. We, you know, we come. We you know, one's led by the spirit of God; the other's led by the an antichrist spirit, a demonic spirit. And the Bible says the flesh and the spirit war against one another. The flesh and the spirit don't get along. I don't know if you know that or not. We talked about that at our marriage conference. So if you have someone in the marriage that's walking in the spirit and the other one's walking in the flesh, well, there's a spiritual battle going on in their house. So no matter how many books they read, no how many love languages they try to discover, there's, a, there's always going to be conflict because the flesh and the spirit, you cannot walk in the spirit and the flesh at the same time and vice versa. But it goes in verse 12 and it says this, When these people eat with you in your fellowship meals commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. Ooh, man. They are like shameless shepherds who care only for themselves. They are like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. Think of that. They make a lot of noise, but they bring no relief. They're just blowing clouds, but they don't give any rain. They are like trees in autumn that are doubly dead, for they bear no fruit and have been pulled up by their roots. They are like wild waves of the sea churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. They are like wandering stars doomed forever to blackest darkness. Ooh, these people, they shipwreck. And they've tried to shipwreck the body of Christ, but we have to continue to remain faithful. Stand against these things. Stand against these things. You got to bark. Hey, we don't do that. We don't say that. We don't believe that. Got to get rid of these playboy pastors sitting around, not saying, who's just sitting there. You know, you got, you got Ray Charles as the pastor, Stevie Wonder as the assistant pastor. They're blind to everything. They, they, they don't get on to nobody, nothing. They just let people do whatever they want to do, and they don't speak up. How much is the pastor in the window? Toys R Us preaches. I'm not going to get preaching tonight. Verse 14. Enoch, who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, prophesied about these people. He's prophesying about the people right now. He said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy one, praise God, to execute what? Judgment. On the people of the world. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Wow. 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 Hey, you that are on right now, you, you're soldiers. Because there's a lot of people, they, they get on here and they'll jump off because, I mean, this is not an easy word to accept. For a lot of people, it's not. You got to be at a level to, to accept this. But, you know, we got the people in on our church that are hungry for this because the church laid down a long time ago and they fell asleep. And then they died. We're standing up. We're not taking no nap, no time off in Jesus' mighty name. Hmm. I like that last part, quite honestly. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. 
These people, it says in verse 16, they're, they're grumblers and complainers living only to satisfy their desires. They brag loudly about themselves and they flatter others to get what they want. Hmm. Wow. We've got to be in love with the Word of God. We've we got to give the Word of God first place in our life. And that, that, that has to continue to be said. Continue to be said. Because if you don't continue saying it, people, they'll get out and, and like I've told them, acceptance is a demonic thing, man. People want to be accepted so bad, the enemy uses it. And... They'll just say whatever they got to do and believe whatever they got to believe. Think about the stuff this world believes, and a lot of people who you didn't believe it, they believe it now because they want to be loved by the world. They want to be accepted so bad. But, me, acceptance is overrated. I'm telling you, it is. You got to keep doing, ah, just, I ain't going to get into it. Verse 17, hallelujah. If you're just joining us tonight, good to have you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ said. They told you that in the last times there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. These people are the ones who, cre who are creating divisions among you. Mm, mm. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's Spirit in them. Boy, hallelujah. Think what he just said. In the last times, there's going to be scoffers. That's what we're seeing. I see it every week, more than I ever have. Scoffers who, what does it say their purpose is in life? to satisfy their ungodly desires. So if we're preaching against ungodly desires, it causes people to foam at the mouth because the only thing they want to do, the only reason they live is to satisfy their ungodly desires. It's like everybody in the world wanting a Cadillac, but God's Word says a Cadillac's of the devil, and we say you shouldn't get a Cadillac, and everybody freaks out even though there's nothing wrong with Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying it, 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 it's like people, they, 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 they lose their minds. These people are the ones who are creating division among you. They follow their natural instincts because they don't have the Spirit of God in them. Verse 20, But you, dear friends, this is what the church needs to be doing, must build each other up in your most holy faith, praying in the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourselves safe in God's love. Verse 22, and you must show mercy to those who are, uh, to, to those whose faith is wavering. So there's going to be times that there's people in the church, and man, they're struggling. It's different than what we were just reading about the false teachers and the fake ID Christians. We're talking about believers here. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to others, but do so with great caution hating the sins that contaminate their lives. Ooh. Ha! What did you say there? Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment, show mercy to still others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. Like, love them, but boy, hate that sin. Now, what's that mean? If I hate that sin, that means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. I'm going to speak against it. But see, we, we, we've, we've, we've loved the sinner, and we've loved the sin, and we've approved of the sin, so the sinner no longer needs to be saved. 
He says, Jesus is fine with my sin, so I can stay how I am. I'll just keep living in this sin. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Wow. Praise God. We're going to have a time on Sunday. And I want to say everybody who came out on Saturday for Saturday Night Prayer, thank you guys so much for praying for me and my family. You know, there are times and seasons, you know, the enemy just is, is relentless in trying to stop us. He is. But we're, we keep moving forward in the name of Jesus. We serve a good God. Oh, don't we? Hallelujah. We serve a good God. Now, in verse 24, Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away. Well, well there you go. It's possible to fall away if, so, if God can keep you from falling away. To keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into His glorious presence without a single fault. Oh, hallelujah. That's the power of the blood of Jesus. Oh, that when you gave your life to Jesus, His righteousness was imputed to you. Your sins was imputed to Him. He died for your sins. Verse 25, all glory to Him who alone is God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All glory, majesty, power, and authority are His before all time and in the present and beyond all time. Amen. So we have just read, the, the, you know, just one chapter, but the entire book of Jude, the letter that Jude wrote um, to the believers. And he was telling us about the dangers of the false teachers, and he was calling us to remain faithful. And he ended with a prayer of praise. And we have to stand guard. We cannot let the enemy just yell 24-7 and speak filth and vile wickedness while the church just sits around being like, well, you know, that's, that, it, you know it'll get better. No, it's not. It's not. The church has to speak up. And what the church has to do is has to be willing to be misunderstood, has to be willing to be hated, has to be willing to be ridiculed, has to be willing to be rejected, has to, willi- has to be willing to be belittled and made fun of and laughed at. Got to do it if you're going to speak the truth. This word right here will cause people to convulse. But if we don't preach it, then the people who want to receive it will never receive it. And then they'll get a, 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 a mindset thinking that, well, God's Word is something that it's not. Now, everybody can read the Word. The majority of people, uh, if they would just get into the Word, it would change their life. But there is an entire country that we're living in that, have, that they think of Jesus, they think of God in a manner that that's not who God is. That's not who Jesus is. And now we're left with a system that is godless. And we have to remind people, our generation, our, my, my, my kids' generation, like if there's just a thousand people or five people or five million people, I'm do, whoever gets it, it's worth it. it it's, it's worth it every single day. But if the church keeps being the false church, as a lot of them have been, now, I'm, I'm going to say that a lot of, I mean, unless they really, really wake up. But the true church needs to really say, hey, you know what? Let's, let's make sure we don't turn into a false church. Because there's a lot of churches that started off good and right. And today, they're, they're, they've gone so far to where they're agreeing with the agenda of Satan. They're, they're, they're agreeing with a, a demonic uh, governing system, and they're uh, not only promoting it, they're, they're, they're agreeing with it. They're backing it. And, and we as the church have to say, you know what, if people are going to come to Christ and be saved, well, first of all, if, if, if you don't preach against sin, then why do, what does anybody need saving from? And the church doesn't even preach against sin anymore. What do you even need to be saved from if everything's fine? 
drugs are fine, drinking's fine, any kind of lifestyle's fine. Be who you want, do what you want. And Jesus, and you know what? Um, Jesus won't get in your way. He'll follow you. That's sad. But praise God, there are churches that are rising up. We are one of those churches. And we're not going to back down. I believe there are hungry people in this city. I believe there are thousands of people who, if they knew our church was here, they'd drive two hours away just to get here. I believe that. Why? Well, it's hard to understand if you've never been to our church but there's really no other church around like it. And I'm not saying like, oh, we, are we, well, I mean, yeah, we, we let the Holy Ghost move in our church. Our church is different, I understand. Our church is not culture-friendly, meaning that, you know, our services are longer. Well, you don't know if I go there. I, kinda, I like the preaching, I like the worship, but they're long. No, man, you keep going to that our, our church. That's not who we are. We'll never be that. And we're not trying to go long, we're not trying to go short, but man, once God gets moving. You know, you think about what people hear during the week and they come to church and hear a 20-minute message. They hear hundreds of hours of filth in the world. I'm thankful that we have a church to where, hey, God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus is free to move as He wishes. And we've seen supernatural things happen that would have never happened if we had a time limit on what God was doing. And, you know, if people have to leave and get up, that's fine. But, like, I mean, 99% of people don't move. And, and, and you know what? They'd wish you'd go long because they're hungry. And once you get a taste, taste and see, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Once you experience the power and the presence of God, nothing will compare with that. I mean, you, there's nothing. I'm telling you, the presence and power of God have changed my life. Have changed my life. And we're not going to be a culture church. We're not going to be a, a, a sensitive church. We're not going to be a, you know, a sin-friendly church. We're not. We have people that come in every week that are bound by the devil and they get set free. So that tells me that when you preach the way Jesus told us to preach, things happen. But when you just kind of, you know, are a are a, you know, a cupcake church, you know, you look good, you taste good, you know, you're the candy man. A lot of pastors, they're the candy man. They make the world taste good. <laughs> the candy man can. That's something. But not us. Why? Because God's Word says there's a specific way to do things, and that's how we're going to do them. So you can write 10-page articles on us. You can make a whole magazine about us. And you know what? It really won't make a difference. It really won't. You're wasting your time. It only helps us. I mean, think of that. That has to be discouraging to put all that work. Well, it's not much work because there's there's no investigating. I'm thankful that people who write those kind of articles aren't detectives. Um, but, you know, you got your crayon and you write and, you know, kid things. But silly little kids, you can't shut down the Holy Ghost. You, I would say you should know better than that, but you don't. Holy Ghost will shut you down. I'm telling you, if you're a pastor out there and you're standing up for the Holy Ghost, God will watch out for you, man. And I'm proud of you. God's proud of you. You keep pressing forward. Don't stop. Don't quit. 
Will any of these clowns, man? Will any of these clowns stop you or intimidate you? They can't do nothing. They're all bark, man. They ain't got no bite. Keyboard warriors. And if you got to, disconnect yourself from, I mean, I don't even watch the news. I don't watch the news. You want to know what's going on? No, I don't. It's the same. It's the same no matter when you turn it on. Do you realize that? The news is the same. It's like Back to the Future, the first one. No matter how many times I watch it, it's still the same. It's the way the news is. It's just every time you turn it on. So I'm going to stay in the, the word of God in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, everybody, thank you. I'm just, man, it's so, so I'm just reading through some of these comments. We would love to have your mom, Colleen, from Kentucky. Jackson, how you doing, Jackson Ash? Love you, buddy. Jill, Carmen, Skyler, Ashley, Rachel, Amy, Christy, Kelsey, Rhonda Horth. Love all of you guys so much. We've, we've really had a good time on these Tuesday nights. Praise God. I know we don't have a, an enormous audience, but, you know, the Lord's using this to change people's lives. And if it's one or if it's five or it's ten, then praise God. I'm thankful we get to come together. God told me to do this years ago. We finally got it together. And, you know, this word, it, it, it finds it. I mean, every week we have people that come to our church because of this Tuesday night program. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful. We serve a good God. We serve a good God. He's a mighty God. He's mighty to save. He's mighty to deliver. Oh, right now, if you're dealing with sickness in your body, I just come against sickness right now. In Jesus' name, I command every fever to break in Jesus' name right now. Oh, I thank you, Lord, that every person watching, if they are sick, their body lines up with the Word of God now. Oh, just plead the blood of Jesus over your house, over your family, over your children. Anoint the rooms with oil. Anoint your kids with oil. Say, in the name of Jesus, sickness cannot live in this house. Oh, we thank you, Heavenly Father. You're a good God, a mighty God. Oh, I thank you, Lord. We bind all depression in Jesus' name. All anxiety in Jesus' name. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for the freedom. I thank you, Lord, for a spirit of praise and a spirit of joy. Rise up on the inside of us now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We just come against all worry and doubt, all the things, panic that the enemy tries to send against people, and we command it to go in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> God is good. Amen. Well, it has been, as always, a, a, an honor to come to you this Tuesday night. And don't forget, on Saturday, we have prayer at 7 p.m. And then uh, we have service at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Don't forget to share this post with people. I always say, too, go over to Google. Leave us a review for Nexus Church, what the Lord's done in your life. I like it when people get to see all the miracles that are happening in people's lives go over to facebook leave a review there don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel nexus church tv hit the notification button and you, you'll you know every almost every day uh we're, we're posting stuff and videos our full sermons are on there video sermons you can like i said download the nexus app a lot of lot of resources that you can use throughout the week to listen to the sermons you can uh, read booklets on our Nexus app. There's a lot of stuff. And, and also, um, if you weren't here on Sunday, you can give on the Nexus app. If you didn't get a chance to give your tithe and offerings, 
Uh, don't forget to do that. You can also text to give by texting uh, texting Nexus to 206-859-9405. And I'm telling you, every dime that is given is going back to the gospel, going out in Jesus' mighty name. And if this has been a blessing to you, man, I'm telling you, God is doing mighty, mighty things. We're growing more and more every week. We're overflowing, overflowing from the north, the south, the east, and to the west. I just every this is last year was the greatest year we ever had, and this year has already started out to be a double what last year was because this is multiplication upon multiplication. Amen. Well, guys, I love you. God bless you. Stay in the word. Keep standing for the word, and uh, hey, keep remaining faithful in Jesus' mighty name. I love you guys. God bless you.